Welcome back on this Wednesday to These Things Are Written, our daily video Bible study that has been looking at the book of Acts for the last few weeks. And as we continue with our reading in the book of Acts, uh, we are picking it up with Paul just finishing his defense of the, his ministry, speaking first of all, all first of all, of how he was, uh, how he was strict in the Jewish faith as a, as a Pharisee, of how then he um, saw the light literally on the road to Damascus, uh, pulling him out of the darkness of sin and and Satan into the light of forgiveness and grace in Christ. He ends his defense with a statement of Christ's fulfillment of the prophets and of Moses through his death and his resurrection. We pick up reading with verse 24 of Acts 26. And as he, Paul, was saying these things in his defense, Festus said in a, with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking true and rational words, for the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe in the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king rose and the governor and, and Bernice and those who were sitting with them. And when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, This man could not or could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. This is the word of the Lord. After Paul had spoken these things, Festus cries out, You are crazy. As a secularly trained man, he couldn't grasp the resurrection. He couldn't logically get past the understanding of how God in his love and his mercy and his forgiveness could raise anyone from the dead, much less someone who had been crucified. But Paul said, I'm not out of my mind, but I'm I'm speaking the truth. And then he points to Agrippa and says, Agrippa, you know, you have heard, you have seen, because these things were not being done in secret. You know these things to be true. And then he confronted the king. He was bold in his witness, being willing to speak the truth in front of King Agrippa. King Agrippa's response was simple. Do you think that in a short time you could convert me to be a Christian? Paul said, you know, you or anyone who hears me, my goal is that you might be like me, that you might, instead of walking in the darkness of the past, might walk in the light of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Okay, I might be adding a little bit to it, but really that is his intent in speaking these words. Their decision when they got together was simple. You know, they have done nothing that is deserving death. He should be set free, but he couldn't because he had already appealed to Caesar. And really that appeal probably kept him alive because the Jews, even in Caesarea, would have been looking out for him to be able to put him to death. So what does this mean for us today? You know, many people see Christianity or Christians as really being out of our mind because we believe things that are not logically explained. We believe in the virgin birth. We believe in the resurrection. We believe that by, with the water being poured at the word of Christ, Faith is worked into the life of a child. Forgiveness is given, not earned, but given free of charge. We believe that God created the world and the, and the heavens in, in six literal days. 
we believe that God uses a little piece of bread and a little sip of wine and says, this is my body, this is my blood, and he gives it to us so that our sins might be forgiven. You see, our God is not a logical God. Our God is a God who who works and does mighty things in very different and unique ways. You see, they don't have what we have. They don't have the Spirit helping them to believe the unbelievable, helping them to see the truth that we have before us in Jesus Christ. And may we have the courage to speak the Word of God boldly to our friends, to our family, to those even perhaps kings and rulers over us, and proclaim the gospel and the hope of Jesus Christ to them. May God grant this to you and to me today and always. Go in peace. We'll see you tomorrow as we start looking at Paul's journey to Rome um, and the shipwreck that would happen as well. Go in peace. Amen.